Hi, uh, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to have a little conversation about something called the Corwin Amendment. Now, we don't talk about the Corwin Amendment very much, but the amazing thing about the amendment and why we call it the amendment was it was the original 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. That is what it was supposed to be. And I want to talk about it a little bit. I'm not reading a bunch of notes here or whatever. I'm just having a conversation about it. So I'm not going into extreme depth with lots of things at my fingertips. But I think one of the most important things to talk about is how people reacted how they acted just before the American Civil War. You know, you got to think of a drowning man is going to grab on anything. And a drowning republic will do the same. So what was the Corwin Amendment? Well, it was a hastily drawn up piece of paper, a document, worked on by several people, but mainly William Seward. And William Seward was more or less the mouthpiece for the Republican Party at the time, let's say 1860. But what is really very important and should be remembered is the fact that we had gone through a series of compromises going all the way back to 1820 and where we had set up and established lines in which slavery could take place and where slavery could not. The Missouri Compromise of 1820, and then you had various other compromises leading up to the Compromise of 1850, which nearly led to civil war. And then, of course, it was followed up by Senator Stephen Douglas, who said, let's not do these compromises, setting up st slave states and free states. Let's use something called popular sovereignty. Let the citizens of the state decide what the state should be. Well, <laughs> that didn't go over too well. And if you think about it, if you've ever heard about bleeding Kansas, Half the population wanted slavery, and half the population didn't. Therefore, they started shooting at each other. It was sort of like a pilot plant for the American Civil War. In fact, they had two different constitutions for a while. One free, one slave. You see, how it had worked since the country had been founded um, was that you had a certain number of slave states, and a certain number of free states. And they were always pretty much equal. And so whenever you added a free state, you added a slave state. Or whenever you added a slave state, you added a free state. That way it kept a balance. But as time went on, as we get into the 1850s, this was no longer going to be the case. And the South started getting very upset. And there were threats of secession and lots of arguing and fighting over slavery. Now, a lot of times I always hear people talk about the Civil War and say it wasn't exactly about slavery. Well, that's kind of incorrect in many respects. I mean, it was about slavery and indirectly about everything else affected by slavery because you had to have that balance. And if you didn't have that balance, you didn't have a country. And so, in the 1850s, as everything started to fall apart, and James Buchanan was the president, and James Buchanan was sitting there saying, I don't want any problems, let's try to rationalize, let's try to make things easy and simple. He was what was known as a doe face. And doe faces, of course, were folks from the North who were basically supportive of slavery. 
And so by the time we get toward the latter 1850s, it's not a question of if there would be a civil war. It was a question of when. And there were several actions taken. And one of the most important was the Corwin Amendment. As I said, hastily written up, basically by a drowning republic. And of course, written up by William Seward mainly, because he was very, very good at what he did. And, of course, by this point in the late 1850s, going into 1860, when we get to the 1860 election, when all hell breaks loose, and the battles start over the Corwin Amendment. I'll give you an idea what it says, and then you think about how people reacted to it. This is from the notes from the House of Representatives, the only piece of paper I'm going to pull out outside of one other. And here it is, part of it, but this is the meat of the amendment. Remember, this is for a constitutional amendment. And it says, No amendment shall be made to the Constitution which will authorize or give Congress power to abolish or interfere with any state, with any domestic institutions thereof, including that of persons held to labor or service by the laws of said state. Now let's translate that very simply. What that is saying is that this constitutional amendment, the 13th, states that if southern states have slaves it is beyond the scope or the ability of the federal government to do anything about it nor can they harass the state over it therefore they have the constitutional right in fact everyone within the country has the constitutional right to have slaves that's what it said now, why would they do something as insane as this? If you think about it, it's sitting there saying, okay, you want to have slaves? Have slaves. You want to keep slaves? You want a whole mess of slaves? Fine, get them. Now, of course, here's the interesting part about all this. There were some arguments that they wanted to take the Missouri line, which separated the free and the slave states, and go right across uh, the continent and allow slaves in the southern part and, and free in the north. That didn't really go much of anywhere. But the Corwin Amendment was basically looked upon as a great big, huge, monstrous band-aid to solve a situation that they didn't know how else to solve. Seward wrote it up. Seward had his friend, Mr. Weed, talk to Lincoln and Lincoln agreed to parts of it and, and endorsed other parts of it. In fact, I want to just throw out one more thing to you. Here, I want you to hear what Abraham Lincoln had to say about this amendment that he had heard all about and talked all about. But you have to remember, Lincoln is a phenomenal politician. And we always try to make him a statesman and not a politician, but he was a politician first. And he was always doing politics. And so he would say to some people, he's for something. Say to other people, he's against it, depending on who he spoke to. You know, it's a totally different world. Today, you can't do things like that because we have sound bites and film and all that other stuff. But here's what Lincoln said in his inaugural address about the Corwin Amendment, which, of course, he didn't quite know anything about. And he said this, I understand a proposed amendment to the Constitution, which amendment, however, I have not seen, has passed Congress to the effect that the federal government shall never interfere with the domestic institutions of the states, including that of persons held to service, such as provision to now be implied in constitutional law. I have no objection to its being made express and irrevocable. Think about that. What did Lincoln just say? 
I have no problem with slavery. I have no problem in allowing slavery, slavery to exist, to exist as it is. Now, Lincoln had qualifications on this. He didn't want the expansion of slavery, but he had nothing against keeping slavery as it was. And the Corwin Amendment was an easy fix to keep the South in the Union. It passed the House. It passed the Senate. It had to get voted in by the states. And four states voted it in, the last being Illinois. But here's the interesting thing. Just as this amendment was going through in early January, the Star of the West was attacked uh, right outside of Fort Sumter. It was coming to uh, basically provision the fort, and the Citadel fired on the ship. Those were really the first shots of the American Civil War. The ship went back to New York, and of course the, the Corwin Amendment started having serious issues because states were seceding. For a while, South Carolina was its own country. But then the other states started leaving. And before long, the Corwin Amendment really had nothing. Nothing to basically offer because the southern states, as far as they were concerned, were no longer a part of the federal government. They were part of the Confederate States of, the, of America. But think of how close we could have come to creating basically a situation where slavery was a constitutional right. Now, once again, as I said, a drowning man will grab at anything and a drowning republic will do the same. Lincoln, Seward, everyone else figured they had no other choice. They didn't have any idea what else to so it was a very scary period of time. And I've often thought that had the Corwin Amendment come out several months earlier, would it have gone through and passed by all the states? But uh, that's something we will never know. But it's a fascinating thing that in 1861, Abraham Lincoln was supporting the 13th Amendment. However, it was the complete 180 from what the 13th Amendment of 1865 would be, which would basically be the eradication of slavery rather than a constitutional amendment to make it a right to have slaves. Very important thing in the history of the United States in the history of the Civil War, in the history of this country. Thank goodness it never was passed. Thank goodness it went into the circular file of history. And thank goodness for the 13th Amendment of 1865, which finally ended the scourge of slavery far too late, as far as I'm concerned, in the United States. Every other country in the world was able to solve such an issue. We had to have a war and have 700,000 soldiers, civilians, slaves, killed, died in the line of fire, fighting for ideas, in a sense, stupidity. Because the Civil War is a war that in many respects, shouldn't have been fought, but it was. And there was no way to solve a situation that should have been, in a sense, diplomatically solved, per perhaps between sectors. Maybe we could have purchased the slaves from their owners and then given them their freedom. But there was just too much going on. There was just too much angst and there was a powder keg waiting to explode. And it had been waiting to explode for a long, long time. 
Abraham Lincoln basically let the match be lit. And here's the interesting thing, just to finish this off. After the Star of the West was fired upon, it was stated in Harper's Weekly that any other ship going to Fort Sumter to provision the fort would be looked upon by South Carolina as an act of war. Lincoln was very aware of it, but he understood, at least in his understanding, that he had to get the war started and he had to have the South fire first. And so what he did, he sent ships to Fort Sumter. He knew what the reaction would be. He even sent a telegraph message to the governor to let him know what he was doing. And within 24 hours of that, the guns were firing on Sumter. The Civil War had begun. And what began as a war over slavery eventually became a war to end it. So you start the Civil War with the 13th. And you end it with the 13th. 180 degrees difference. What a fascinating piece of history that we don't really talk about very much. Thank you very much.